Hello, welcome to Sonography Radiology Training Channel. This series of videos is a scientific presentation about fetal ultrasound. This is the third video in this video series about differentiating cesarean square pregnancy from low intrauterine pregnancy. Caesarean square pregnancy is one type of ectopic pregnancy in which the gestational thug is implanted into the prior caesarean score. Caesarean score pregnancy with positive embryonic or fetal heart activity managed expectantly is associated with high burden of maternal morbidity. Women with a prior caesarean score pregnancy have a high risk of recurrence miscarriage preterm births to accreta spectrum but it remains unclear whether different types of management impact reproductive outcome. Therefore, it is very important to manage Manage caesarean score pregnancy properly. Ultrasound is regarded as the first line of examination for caesarean score pregnancies. The diagnosis of CSP is not easy as it can be judged by the number of incorrect or missed diagnoses, such as normal but low intrauterine product, abortion in progress, ectopic pregnancy and cervical pregnancy. Unrecognized or misdiagnosed CSPs treated with inadequate procedures may lead to severe and at times uncontrollable vaginal bleeding and even hysterectomy. It's therefore clear that misdiagnosing CSP as an intrauterine product or missing its correct diagnosis altogether has the potential to create dangerous clinical challenges with untoward outcomes. If you do a Google search, you will find numerous papers about CSP diagnosis and its challenges. In this video, I will explain two ultrasound methods for CSP diagnosis. The first one is easy sonographic technique and the another the logistic regression model. Sonographic technique is according to this paper which was published at 2016. In this technique, first step, we must take a complete longitudinal view of pregnant uterus by transvaginal ultrasound. A straight longitudinal line is drawn connecting the external os of the cervix and the uterine fundus. This measurement represented the uterine size famous as A line. In second step, on the same image, midpoint section of the uterine size is marked by a line that transected the above line by half at 90 degrees. This point was called midpoint of uterus or end line. In third step, the center of gestational sac is represented by the letter X. In fourth step, the distance from the external cervical os to the center of the gestational sac is measured. This represented the distance and the location of the sac in relation to the cervix and is termed cervix to center of sac distance or B line. In fourth step, the distance between the center of the gestational sac and the midpoint axis of the uterus is calculated. And in fifth step, the distance from the external cervical os to most distant edge of the gestational sac is measured, distant C or C line, which is named cervix to most distant edge of sac distance. The distance between the most distal edge of the gestational sac and the midpoint of the uterus is calculated, named CM distance. Some examples of this technique. This is a normal IUP and this is a CSP. In normal IUP, the center of gestational sac is located distally from the midpoint axis of the uterus. But in CSP, the center of gestational sac is located proximally to the midpoint axis of the uterus. In this image, we can see examples of normal intrauterine products. In this image, unverted uterus without previous caesarean delivery. Panel B shows retroverted uterus 
without previous cesarean delivery and panel C shows untoverted uterus with previous cesarean delivery. In this image we can see several examples of cesarean scar pregnancies. This A and C show untoverted uteri with CSP. As we can see in all of this image, gestational site located proximal related to M line. And this two image shows retroverted uteri with CSP. The suggested method to diagnose the location of gestational sog as intrauterine or in the score of a previous caesarean delivery is simple and easy to use because we need only one longitudinal image of uterus in transvaginal ultrasound. The likelihood ratio of positive tests of 84 indicates a large and often conclusive increase in the likelihood of CSB if the test is positive. The likelihood ratio of the negative test of 0.07 suggests a large and often conclusive decrease in the likelihood of CSB if the test is negative. And the another technique is logistic regression model. This technique is according to this paper, which was published at 2020. In first step, we must determine the implantation site by transvaginal ultrasound, which could be divided into five types. The first one in the fundus, anterior part, posterior part, the lower anterior part, and the lower posterior part. Of course, this type of implantation sites no need to more evaluation. In the sagittal view of uterus, the implantation site manifested as a hyperechogenicity ring that occupies the one side of the gestational sac, opposite to the displacement direction of uterine cavity, which was considered as maternal deciduous reaction, the start site of maternal fetal circulation, and the original site of placental formation and development. In second step, we assessed the relationship between the gestational sac and the caesarean square, which could be divided into four types. The first one away from the scar, close to the scar, across the scar, and into the scar. Of course, in first type, no need to more evaluation. In third step, we measure the thickness of residual muscle above the scar, which is the shortest distance between the uterine serosa and the chorionic villi. We must position the crossers on the inner side of the uterine serosa, which is hyperechoic, and the outer side of chorionic villi, which is hyperechoic also. And we must measure this hypoechoic area between two hyperechoic lines, which is the residual muscle. In first step, we must identify the source of the trophoblastic blood follow, which could be divided into three sources. The first one from the lower anterior uterus. This is an example of 28-year-old pregnant female. The sagittal grayscale image shows that the sac was implanted in the lower endometrial cavity protruding into the scar. There was a small amount of fluid in the uterine thundus. In color doppler image, the trophoblastic blood follow from the lower anterior uterus is determined. Chorionic fly were observed within the scar with a laparoscopy combined with uterine artery embolization. The another type is from the lower posterior uterus. Another example, a 36-year-old pregnant female. The sagittal gray skull image shows that the sac was implanted in the lower endometrial cavity protruding into the scar. The color doppler image shows the trophoblastic blood follow from the lower posterior uterus and chronic fly were not visible inside the scar with a laparoscopy. Another source of the trophoblastic blood follow may be known. This is an example of 29-year-old pregnant female. This sagittal image shows the sac was implanted into the lower endometrial cavity protruding into the scar. 
a small amount of fluid was seen around the posterior of conceptus, suggesting that the slug was implanted into this scar. A color Doppler image shows the trophoblastic blood fallow surrounding the stalk, which made it difficult to estimate the source of the trophoblastic blood. Chronic villi were re evaluating the scar with a laparoscopy combined with uterine artery embolization. When the trophoblastic blood follow could not be differentiated from the myometrial blood follow by the color Doppler mode, the pulse Doppler function was used to provide additional information. Typical trophoblastic blood follow usually shows a high velocity and a low resistance frequency spectrum, consistent with normal pregnancies. If it was difficult to identify the source of the trophoblastic blood follow by both the color and pulse Doppler ultrasound, it was defined as a noun. The relationship between the gestational sock and the scar the source of the trophoblastic blood follow and the thickness of residual muscle were selected as the diagnostic indicators using the logistic regression model. When this p-value was considered as the cutoff value, the diagnostic accuracy for logistic regression model was 86%. Now, discussion of these two techniques for comparison with them. Pregnancies implanted in the lower uterus may develop into placenta previa or placenta accreta. However, follow-up is acceptable with close monitoring and reasonable assessment of the risk for those determined to keep the babies. Therefore, it's crucial to make differential diagnosis between a caesarean score pregnancy and a pregnancy implanted into the lower uterus as their outcomes are not completely the same. The principle of treatment for females with caesarean score pregnancy is to terminate the pregnancy in order to avoid serious complications such as uterine rupture and massive hemorrhage. Most studies like easy sonographic technique have used the relationship between the gestational sock and the caesarean score to diagnose caesarean score pregnancies. If the gap between the sock and the score vanishes this is taken to mean that the stock is implanted into the scar. This indicator can effectively differentiate a pregnancy implanted in the lower anterior uterus near the scar from caesarean scar pregnancies. However, when the gestational stock is implanted in lower posterior uterus, this can create the false positive disappearance of the gap, which makes this indicator highly sensitive and unspecific. The thin myometrium above the caesarean scar is another crucial indicator of myometrial invasion and implantation into the scar. But a case series has reported that two-thirds of caesarean scar pregnancies have a thinning myometrium less than 5 mm in thickness. In the logistic regression model, when the remaining myometrial depth of 2.35 mm was regarded as the diagnostic indicator, the area under the curve of ROC was 0.8, which was taken as a moderate diagnostic value. However, when the caesarean score heals poorly, a myometrial defect may develop, named caesarean section score diverticulum, which can also lead to a thinning myometrium. Another study, interestingly, reported that the possibility of the depth of the remaining myometrium less than 2.2 mm is about 14% in first, 23% in second and 43% in third caesarean delivery. Therefore, the thickness of residual muscle is not a good indicator. Since all above indicators represent indirect signs, if we can directly observe the implantation site, it may help us to correctly diagnose the caesarean skull pregnancy. 
One study proposed that the implantation site can manifest as a hyperechogenesis ring that occupies one side of gestational sac opposite to the displacement direction of the uterine cavity. With the growing of the gestational sac, the decidua capsularis getting gradually closer to decidua partialis, the structure of the uterine cavity disappears. So, when there is no fluid in the uterine cavity, it's difficult to detect the displacement direction of the uterine cavity line and thus the hyperechogenicity echogenicity link represented as the implantation site. In the logistic regression model proposed that transvaginal ultrasound combined with color and pulse Doppler assessment in early gestation provided better opportunity of detecting caesarean scar pregnancies. Therefore, the source of trophoblastic blood follow can effectively differentiate caesarean scar pregnancy from pregnancies implanted into the lower posterior uterus. However, it's still difficult to identify pregnancies implanted into the lower anterior uterus close to the scar. Therefore, the logistic regression model developed in this study can better distinguish caesarean scar pregnancies from other pregnancies implanted into the lower uterus, avoiding the incorrect diagnosis of caesarean scar pregnancies and unnecessary uterine artery embolism or termination of the pregnancy. Now, please pay attention to this final teaching point. According to easy sonographic technique, the location of the center of the gestational sac related to the midpoint axis of the uterus can be used as an easy, non-invasive method for sonographic differentiation of IUP and CSP in early gestation. A low implanted gestational site in relation to the middle of the uterus at 5 to 10 weeks of gestation can identify almost all CSPs. However, the final diagnosis should be corroborated by full fitting clinical and sonographic criteria. Clinical interventions based only on the distance from gestational sac to the midline of the uterus might affect some normal pregnancies wrongly considered as caesarean scar pregnancies. According to logistic regression model, combined use of ultrasound indicators such as the relationship between the gestational slug and the caesarean scar, the source of the trophoblastic blood fallow, and the thickness of residual muscle with improved differential diagnosis between caesarean scar pregnancies and other pregnancies implanted in the lower uterus. Now, I suggest two others of my videos that are close to this video in terms of matter. Thank you for your attention.